تفلسنيش ما تفلسنيش انا نقول لك نحي يديك نحي نحي يديك ما تفلسنيش يا ولدي These are images from the film, The Battle of Algiers, banned in France in the 1960s. Its power as a document of the flourishing liberation wars throughout the region. For women, those wars were not only a promise of freedom from colonial rule, but also from female subjugation. Today, for women living in more than 20 sovereign Arab states, the promise remains unfulfilled. A delegation of Arab women activists are traveling throughout the U.S. bringing the word that in the Sudan, Gaza, Palestine, Lebanon, Egypt, Jordan, Algeria, they are fighting for women's rights. And they're well versed in the hard lessons women learned in the anti-colonial revolutions. أخواتنا وبناتنا من هذا الاضطهاد برضو الاستعمار البريطاني هو برضو زاد من وعينا في أنه نتكشف أنه هو كيف كان بيستغل الدين وبيستغل الحاجات والتقاليد السودانية على أساس أنه يضطهد المرأة ولذلك ده كلها خلتنا يعني نوع على أنه حقه نتخذ من, من قضايا المرأة في أقصد يعني نوع على أنه إحنا نكون أكثر وعيا بالقضايا دي la discrimination, je l'ai connue dès, dès mon premier jour de naissance. J'étais une quatrième fille d'une famille nombreuse, sept enfants, et, et ma mère n'avait pas encore de, de garçon. Et le premier garçon est venu juste après moi. Donc, du coup, je me suis sentie comme étant la fille qui a été négligée dès le premier jour. D'autre part, je suis d'un milieu ouvrier, mon père était cheminot, et euh, donc, il vivait dans, dans une classe très opprimée, mais ça ne l'a pas empêché de, de battre ma mère tous les jours. Ma mère était toujours une, mère, une femme battue, euh, mère de cet enfant. Elle-même aussi euh, refoulait sa, de, son oppression pour faire la discrimination entre les filles et les garçons. Et c'était le cercle vicieux. Mais ce qui m'a fait que je suis de la CIA, نرجع في مينيست هو لما عملوا قانون الاسره سنه 1984 80 كاتر لما عملوه آه هذاك القانون كان يسمح بتطليق المراه كان يسمح بتعدد الزوجات كان يسمح كان يقول ان المراه آه هي يعني قاصره حياتها يلزم لها واحد يشرف عليها في هذاك الوقت احنا رحنا للحزب نتاعنا وقلنا له لازم نعمل حاجه يعني هذا مش ممكن قلنا لا 
المهم مش هذا مش مهم اليوم بعد ما نبنيو الجزائر ويعني ونخلقوا ونخلق الجزائر الخياليه في ذاك الوقت نعطي الحب احنا خفنا احنا قلنا لما كانوا المجاهدات في وقت الثوره عملوا الثوره خرجوا الاستعمار وما عطاولهمش حقوقهم قالوا لهم روحوا اعملوا يعني دروا لنا الدراري واستكلفوا بالمطبخ فقلنا لا لعبوها لامهاتنا مره احنا ما يلعبوهناش وخرجنا خرجنا من الاحزاب السياسيه ما خرجناش على This tour takes place four years after the Gulf War. Though forgotten amid the violence and international posturing, Arab women's lives were deeply and adversely affected. These women are still on the front lines and have come to talk to American feminists about U.S. foreign policy. They come from countries racked by war, famine, and oppressive state regimes. But oil and strategic advantage tie these internal questions to the larger geopolitics. American interests and local elites find common cause in internal repression. From Algeria, Faikom Jahed. Now, with respect to this particular visit, this particular tour, moi, avant de venir, j'étais persuadée que tout le peuple américain était impérialiste. Uh, before coming here, I was completely persuaded that the entire uh, American community were imperialists. <laughs> Comme les Américains pensaient que nous, on était tous des terroristes. <laughs> Just like all the Americans always thought that all of us, we were terrorists. <laughs> ce qui est complètement faux. Which is completely false. Ce qui m'a permis ce tour. حسب درجة قوة الاتجاهات المحافظة الذكورية في دولة عربية أو أخرى بيكون حتى هذا القانون الأحوال الشخصية اللي مستمد من الشريعة الإسلامية متقدم أو أو متخلف. And she she just would like to note in this instance that there is there is a correlation between how conservative a regime, political regime in an Arab country is, and how conservative the implementation of Islamic Sharia is. They are very much related to each other. مثلا مثل واحد قانون الأحوال الشخصية في الأردن إذا قارنا مع قانون الأحوال الشخصية في تونس لو متنين إسلاميين. For example, if we compare the personal status law in Jordan with that of Tunis, which are both based on Islamic Sharia. من لا إيه بالأردن تعدد الزوجات مسموح بدون أي شروط وممنوع تماما معاقب عليه في تونس. We find out that polygamy is allowed in Jordan, while in Tunis it's completely banned. الحقيقة بس عايزة أكد حاجة إنه النهاردة الجرائم اللي بترتكب في السودان كلها بترتكب باسم الإسلام. I wanted to impress upon one thing: all of the crimes and murders that have been committed in in Sudan all are committed in the name of Islam. الحرب في الجنوب، الجوع والمرض في الشمال، والسجون المملوءة كلها باسم الإسلام. Poverty and disease and illness in the south. War, war, and imprisonment in the north. All of this is is done in the name of Islam. May Allah have mercy on her soul. That once a woman reaches puberty, if she does not bear herself, her if her prayer is not accepted. The Quran speaks of the veil. The Quran speaks of the veil. No. Well, the Quran I read speaks of the veil. I know. Okay. Okay. So, so I'm saying, if it is, if it is your free choice, so it's okay. So in America, but I just wanted to say, in America, alhamdulillah, it is a privilege to worship Allah inwardly and outwardly. Okay. And by the way, is it you who said give money for the homeless? Yeah. I had just written a letter saying. Take some of the money you now give to Israel and give it to Jordan and Lebanon. You know, we don't <laughs> want money, even not in Jordan, not in uh, Lebanon. We don't know, want any American people money. We want uh, money to go direct to the people in the states that needs it. And you have a lot of people, women and men and children, that needs this money. The emerging Palestine is a place where most people only get a trickle of water. How do women like Maha Abdu Sabag run a rape crisis center in the middle of occupation, political upheaval, and transition? The 
Oslo agreement is not by the way it came in. It came as a result of the Gulf War. All the time, the West wants something to let the people think about, and they don't want the people to think about their real situation, their economical, their political situation, their poverty. They want them now to think this is the fashion to think about fundamentalism, about Hamas, about Jihad Islami, about anything else, but not about their true and real situation. <laughs> It is a daily and constant struggle to keep focus, to handle Israeli checkpoints, Palestinian national aspirations, and work to ensure that equality for women is written into the new constitution. This landmark gathering was held in Egypt in 1961. For many Middle Eastern and North African Arab women in the nationalist movements, it was a time of optimism. Today, in Algeria, in a brutal war between the government and Muslim fundamentalists, women are being killed for not wearing the veil and for taking part in public life. In Tunisia, basic protections in the law for women are eroding. In Lebanon, emerging from fractious civil war, life in southern villages is precarious. In Egypt, violence between government and fundamentalists engulfs more and more public space swept away, whether by progressive or conservative regimes, are fundamental human rights for women. These early feminists had envisioned a much more just and equitable future. I started to be a threat to the system when I started to make the link between my profession as a medical doctor and economy and politics and sexuality and women issues and general issues, etc. I was born in Egypt when it was a British colony, during the 30s, you know. And then I was very much fighting in school, and when I entered the medical college against British colonialism. The Nasser came, the revolution, in 1952. So I lived the revolution of Nasser and the nationalization during the 60s and the independence of Egypt. President Gamal Abdel Nasser, his guest of honor, Morocco's King Mohammed V. This is an important moment for Nasser, who has finally got... Nasser died, and then Sadat came, and Sadat was very much pro-capitalism, pro-America, etc. So he shifted the whole policy towards the West, and we became a new colony. Sadat encouraged political religion and the politicization of religion in politics to fight against the left groups and the socialist groups. And he was is encouraged by the US government. And we found that after Sadat encouraged the religious groups, female veiling and circumcision increased. And Sadat was pro-America policy. So in a way, we become more illuminated to the linkage between international politics and sexual politics. In fact, who killed Sadat? They say it's the Islamic fundamentalist groups. Yes, one of them killed him. So the son killed the father, in a way. He created them, then they killed him. The same like the, fundam the Islamic groups in the US who burned the World Trade Center 
from where they came. They were trained by U.S. in Afghanistan. And they came to bomb U.S. who trained them. So the son killed the father. So it's a, it's a story that is repeated in history. So usually we say that uh, political religious groups are the other face of neocolonialism. Neocolonialism and religious political groups all over the world, whether Christian, Islamic, Jewish, Buddhist, are two faces of the same coin. And they serve each other. <laughs> Midway through the tour, after visiting different cities, the activists meet to compare notes. واخدين فكرة على إن الإسلام بالمعنى الواسع بيضطهد المسيحيين فقلنا لا إن حتى في ظل الأحداث اللي حصلت دي والأصوليين الإسلاميين بقى في كمان أصوليين مسيحيين ودول بيدعموا ودول بيدعموا فعشان كده إحنا كنا بنحاول طوالي نشرح الفرق بين الإسلام وبين الـ 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 الأصولية وبين كده والوضع في بالنسبة للمرأة السودانية وإحنا طوالي إحنا كنا بنسألهم أنتوا وضعكم كيف أنتوا التنظيمات بتاعتكم النسائية هي كانت عاملة إيه فيعني هم عارفين اغلبهم احنا قابلناهم عندهم وزاروا فلسطين كثير لكن بالنسبه لبقيه الدول العربيه برضه زاروا مصر كثير لكن بالنسبه لبقيه الدول العربيه ما كان عندهم اي فكره صح كثير الاسئله تركزت على الاسلام والمسلمين مسائل الحريه الشخصيه والشرف وال قانون الاحوال الشخصيه قانون الاحوال الشخصيه والختان آه. احنا آه. مجموعه كويسه قوي في جامعه بيركلي النساء العربيات في امريكا آه واحنا برضه آه بس هم يعني كانوا بقى لهم سنتين دلوقتي شغالين وكانت الفكره ان احنا ركزنا عليهم احنا كمان يعني احنا كمان نبعت لهم يعني آه. ايه ايه بالظبط كل شويه ايه اللي بيحصل ايه اللي بيعمل هم كمان يلعبوا دور في ان هم يدوا صوره مختلفة عن الصورة اللي بتوصل لهم عن العرب او عن النساء العرب ان هم نساء جهلة ومتخلفين وما فيش منهم حد قادر حتى يعمل اي حاجة يعني كتير قوي احنا ركزنا في كلامنا ازاي في محاميات اقوياء جدا في البلدان العربية بيحاولوا ان هم يغيروا في القوانين الموجودة او ان هم حتى يشتغلوا على عقد الزواج اللي موجود دلوقتي <تصفيق> جايبها عاقفة على الذهب يعني بده ياخذ ذهبها وخليها من دون ذهب ومن دون وقفاء وكانت لها عشر سنين في السعودية. اها بده يطلقها هنا ويطلقها و اه لأنه بحق لها بالقانون آه. يعني اللي بتطلق بهيك حالة أول شيء المصاري اللي اللي دفعتهم هي في بيته آه. والذهب اللي اللي حاول ياخذه من هذا إلها آه. إلها ما هي إلها قديش كم ولد عندك؟ بقى معها بنتين وولد ثلاثة اه ثلاثة أولاد اه Esma Khadir, a prominent feminist human rights activist in Jordan, president of the Jordanian Women's Union. The organization provides counseling and advocacy for women's rights. By U.S. and Western standards, Jordan is considered one of the most benign Arab states. Yet, internal security agents and police routinely monitor meetings of the Women's Union. The union was closed down by the government in 1981. They reopened in 1989. <laughs> لما وصل إليه والقضية كلها العربية وصلت لما وصلت إليه بنتيجة سلسلة إجراءات ارتكبوها ناس من أقصى الخليج لأقصى المحيط وإذا بتخلفوني بالرأي يعني بين قوسين بتخلفوني بالرأي خلينا, خلينا نحكي فيعني أعدائنا مش عدو فقط 
عدو واستفاد من اعداء كثر Each wave of political tension in the region sees hopes for women's equality recede. Each wave of political tension means activists must fight harder. During the Gulf War, we came here, we organized a, 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 what we called the International Women Initiative against the Gulf War. And we were moving, even we went to Baghdad, we went to Jordan, we went to Geneva, to Geneva for a conference against the Gulf War, and we came here in the States, and we made them many speeches against the Gulf War. Our voice was never in the media. They censored our voice in the media. They didn't show it, and that's why you didn't... They said Arab women were silent. We were not silent. We were very outspoken everywhere, and even our association was banned, but nobody mentioned that. So you see how censorship plays internationally, how the media is so oriented to protect the status quo of what we call now the, cla the patriarchal class system, the international patriarchal capitalist military class system. And the media serve this system, and that's why our voice is never heard. <laughs> I mean, there is, there is a whole civilization that was, an attempt was to wipe it out of the, you know, face of the earth. Uh, that un un undoubtedly has mobilized Arab women uh, in North America. It mobilized Arab women in the Arab world. There were uh, huge demonstrations in Algeria, in Morocco, in Tunisia, in Palestine, in Jordan, everywhere, actually, with women being the leaders. Why women? For a number of things, because of you know, of, of the immediate, if you want, solidarity that they felt immediately with the primary victims of this war, being, you know, women and children in, in Iraq. And, of course, because of the fact that, after all, they're not the ones in the politics making a decision to go to war or send other men to war. We're not walking away until our mission is done, until the invader is out of Kuwait. And that may well be where you come in. Yeah! The situation of women in the region in general worsened because why? I mean, we look at it this way. First of all, there is the U.S. military and political domination and hegemony of the region, okay? That in itself kind of deters liberation movements who are attempting to rid their own nation states from colonialism and from the regimes that rule those areas. So that's one thing. The deterrent of overall emancipation for a people affects the women as it affects everybody else. But because there is already a sex gender system too that operates to oppress women, it becomes even worse for women because once the movement is defeated, who's going to be the most vulnerable in that situation? How much would women be able to push for women's liberation when there is all these other issues that the whole society needs to deal with? Add to that that there was an escalation and popularism of the Islamist movements and I think precisely because many of the other liberation movements that, that existed in the region were not able to deter U.S. intervention, were not able to stop this domination by borrowing from Western models of Marxism and other ideologies, comes Islamist movements that provide an authentic, homegrown, frame of work that allows people 
to think about it within the region itself and not borrow alien concepts and foreign concepts at the time when foreign powers were worsening their lives. <laughs> I think it's important to highlight the hypocrisy of the state whereby we as a Canadian state or as an American state can dump the weaponry in third world countries and in this case in Saudi Arabia and make best friends with you know, the regime there and never ever sort of criticize that regime which is reactionary and which is suppressive and which is oppressive. I mean, there is a history behind the lines of on the one hand, speaking about how reactionary this Islam is, but never, not a single sentence against the Canadian state, which supports that regime, or the American state, which supports that regime. In 1992, CIA chief and former U.S. Secretary of State, James Schlesinger, when asked whether liberal democracies were appropriate forms of government for other societies, responded, perhaps the issue is most clearly posed in the Islamic world. Do we seriously want to change the institutions in Saudi Arabia? The brief answer is no. Over the years, we have sought to preserve these institutions, sometimes in preference to more democratic forces coursing through the region. On their way to the United Nations, news from the Sudan. Fatima El Fadl's colleague Adila has been arrested. Fatima is warned in a letter not to return home as the same fate awaits her. The Sudan is in the throes of a devastating civil war between North and South. Since 1983, war has claimed over one million lives. In the South, where women head one-third of households, starvation is widespread. The Islamic regime in the north has fired thousands of women employees. Women activists are under close scrutiny. هلا وضع القانوني محلول ولا موقوف ولا شو محظور محظور مع مع المطالبه بضمانات لعدم تعرضها لعدم تعرضها لاي اذى نفسي او جسدي لاي لاي اذى جسدي او نفسي نفسي وتمكينها من الاتصال باهلها ومحاميها So there is a world of difference between the essence of religion, the conception of God as justice, freedom, love, compassion, and God used, being used by politicians and by rulers and by regimes as a book, as a text, to fight against the poor and against women. They tell them, okay, in paradise you will be rewarded <laughs> for your oppression in paradise. So the conception of paradise, that I should not fight here, I fight after I die, you know. So what they do, they say, well, you know, here in the East or in the Muslim society, here there is a lot of virtue, but in the West, no virtue, no morality. 
And that's how they attack us. They say, for instance, we, as Arab feminists, we are westernized, you know, which is not true. And feminism is not a Western invention. Feminism is embedded in the history of each country. Those people who are talking about promiscuity, sexual promiscuity in the West, most of their money is in the banks in the West. You see the paradox? How they are against the so-called moral code in the West, but they are not against the banks of the West or the economic code or the capitalist code or the neo-colonial code. After I wrote about women and sex, many of the groups who wanted to attack me they said Nawal al Sadawi was encouraging premarital sex. And she was against virginity and against, and she wanted promiscuity and corruption. And this was not true. But I was saying that the conception of honor is very limited to the women behavior and women virginity. And we should enlarge the conception of honor to include political honor because if a journalist is a liar and he is a hypocrite and he supports a very unjust ruler or supports neo-colonial powers, how can he be honorable just because his girl is virgin, you know? So we have to, to enlarge the conception of honor to include the behavior of men, politically, economically, socially. The women's meeting with the UN is heated. Cameras are not allowed. They challenge the UN's support for reactionary regimes which oppress women. They question why the UN, while giving the appearance, does not support progressive women's groups from the region. لما كنا احنا في نيويورك بنتناقش مع منظمات الامم المتحده والامم المتحده دائما على منابرها بتقف امريكا والدول الغربيه تجرب هالاصوليين قلنا انه طب انتم بتساعدوا في السودان على سبيل المثال ويمكن فاطمه تتحدث عن هذا الموضوع بشكل افضل انتم بتدعموا عمالكم النظام الفاشي الاصولي في السودان بانكم بتدعموه وبتعطوه فلوس عشان ينفذ مشاريع في حين انه الحركات التقدميه والنسويه اللي عم بتحاول تنفذ مشاريع للناس اللي تح... نزلوا ضحايا للنظام انتم مش عم بتساعدوها فشو كان الرد قال احنا ما بنقدر نخرب النظام السياسي اللي قائم معناته هم راضيين عن هذا النظام وبيدعموه لانه لا يمكن انه يكون في سيطرة على المنطقة بالسودان طبعا عندنا حكم عسكري لكن في الاخر هو حكم يعني اسلامي فظيع يعني فيه الاصوليين والاصوليين هم الحاكمين فالتدخل حسي هو ما واضح هي عامل نفسها بتضرب فيه لكن هي باذر وايز بطريق باخر هي قاعده تدعمه لانه ما عايزه الحركات التقدميه في السودان تقوم وما عايزه حكم ديمقراطي يجي في السودان ولذلك هي زي محافظه على على التوازن ده فاحنا بنفتكر انه بالتاكيد امريكا لا لعب دور في انها تحافظ على الاصوليه عشان عشان الحركات التقدميه او الاحزاب التقدميه ما تطفو على السطح ولا تجي حكومات تقدميه. الحركات الاصوليه تقوت في بلادنا من طرف الدول الغربيه نعم ومن طرف امريكا خاصه وهذا نشوفوه وهذا نشوفوه وانا بدي اوصلها وهذا نشوفوه في افغانستان كانت مكان ولا مخبر تكون فيه وقووا فيه وخلقوا فيه الفاشيه انا اظنهم هذول اللي موجودين في النهضة على الجزائر فباسم الديمقراطيه وباسم وباسم حقوق الانسان يساعدوا الحركات الفاشيه والفاشستيه ومش عارفه كيفاش نقولوا باش ينهكوا عروض النساء ويقتلوا شعبنا ويقتلوا يعني اقتصاد البنات والنساء يعني صار شيء طبيعي جدا في الجزائر وفي واحد يعني في درك بالأردن لسه هناك يعني نوع من الاعتدال في طرح الجماعات السياسية ربما سببه كمان وجود طبقة وسطى في مرحلة ما كبيرة لكن لما منروح على بلد زي مصر أو زي الجزائر أو بلدان صار فيها أزمات اقتصادية اجتماعية حادة جدا بما في ذلك الأراضي المحتلة اللي خلت حركة حماس كمان بنفس الطريقة تنمو واللي السلطات الإسرائيلية سمحت لها 
في مرحلة ما وغضت البصر عنها وسمحت لها أنه تنشط سياسيا لحتى توازن منظمة التحرير الفلسطينية أنا بحكي كفلسطينية أنا بالنسبة إلي ما بخوفنا الحركات الإسلامية الموجودة عندنا في فلسطين ألا بخوفنا الاحتلال الإسرائيلي الموجود عشان هيك يعني أنا اللي بشوف أنه الهدف هنا دائما بدهن ضباب دخان اللي مش راح يشوف بدهن يشوفوا إيش في وراء أنه في استعمار أنه في احتلال أنه في ناس عمالها بتموت من الجوع وهذا الأعمال بنمي حتى الحركات الإسلامية لأنها عمالها بتنمو بجو من الفقر مش هحكي لهم اللي حاصل في السودان كل الناس عارفين وش حاصل في السودان المدبحة الشعبية باسم الإسلام اللي قتلوا فيها كل الناس اللي عندهم أفكار ديمقراطية هحكي لكم الحكم في الجزائر مش ما لازمش نبكي الحكم في الجزائر لسه مش أصولي لكن باسم الإسلام بينتهكوا أعراض النساء باسم الإسلام يقطعوا رؤوس النساء يعني نحب يعني أن الأخوات ينظروا للفكرة هذه مش احنا معنا مشكل مع الاسلام احنا عنا مشكل مع دولنا لان دول الاسلامية دولنا يعني كل دساتيرنا تقول اللي الدولة كذا الفصل الاول دولة اسلامية وخلاص يعني ما عندك شيء محجر عليك انت انك تتكلمي في المسألة هذه فانا يمكن في ناس انتهازيين يعني حركات سياسية حتى يسارية بانتهازية وما يهمهاش في وضع المرأة فانا نقول على الحركات النسوية عربية أني تطرح مسألة اللائكية في في من الأساس يعني من من النقاط الأساسية اللي برنامجها. We hardly know Arab women in their reality. We don't really know much of them as peasants. We don't really know much of them as workers. We don't really know much of them as political <clears throat> agents who make changes and do changes and you know act in whether in national liberation movements or in their you know non-governmental organizations or in their millions of struggles that they launch every single day, whether in Palestine or in Algeria or in Tunisia, fighting fundamentalism, fighting the state, fighting occupation, fighting patriarchy, fighting all of these struggles, sometimes at the same day, sometimes you know at the same time. The question is how to achieve women's equality against internal laws and traditions on the one hand and external power plays on the other. How to achieve women's equality held hostage between the stark forces of Western power and Islamic fundamentalism. It seems to me that the women's movement has to be inclusive. It has to acknowledge that not everything that's part of our culture is bad. I mean, there are bad customs and bad traditions, but not everything is bad. And thus, we do not have to import a model that works for a certain group, sector of American women, for example, and impose it. You know, I mean, you try to impose any kind of model, it doesn't work because it doesn't fit the reality of the women to draw on some of you know, our traditions. And, and I think that's why, that's part of the reason the Islamist movement is successful, because it's drawing on, on indigenous resources and culture. Not everything is imported, you know.
It is almost a century since upper-class Egyptian feminists publicly unveiled at a Cairo train station. Then, as now, feminists like Azza Kamel, working in popular education, were caught in the power struggles between East and West. Then, the veil. Now, female circumcision, used by both West and East in their territorial battles. فالحصل إن هي قدمته في وقت حرج جدا كل إن مفروض الأجانب اللي يحاولوا سعد المصريين لازم كمان هم يعرفوا بيتعاملوا معانا إزاي إن مش كل الموضوع إن أنا رأيت قوم الختان طب ما نجيب يبقى حق اللي اتنين موجودين النظرتين موجودين عشان ما نقولش إيه أو أسيب حد يقول إن آه هم بيركزوا على إن هم يجيبوا الحاجات السيئة فقط عنا وكأننا نسهم فزي إن إحنا نعمل التوازن ده بحيث ما 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 يدعفش قضيتنا إحنا كمصريين لأن اللي حصل إن إحنا كحركة نسائية خسرنا كتير قوي قوي من وراء الموضوع بتاع سي إن إنه بقى كل حركة محسوبة علينا وحتى ده صعب إن حتى الأجانب نفسهم يقدروا يصوروا في حتت مفتوحة أو في حتت شعبية لأن الناس نفسها بقت خايفة مش الحكومة بس كل الناس خايفة آه إيه ده؟ لأن في حاجة فظيعة جدا لما الناس يشوف بنت مصرية إن إحنا كمان عندنا عادات وتقاليد يجب أن تحترم لما يشوفوها في التلفزيون بالمنظر الفظيع ده رغم إنه بيحصل بنقول إن ده شيء ضار ولازم إن إحنا نقاومه وبشدة لكن أعتقد إن كان ممكن يبقى في طريقة تانية مختلفة عن الطريقة اللي تم عرض بيها الموضوع واستخدامه Suddenly, the West discovered that there is something untapped on previously called, you know, clitoridectomy or uh, circumcision of girls, and it became, you know, the fashion of the West now, or, or a fad, where newspapers, TVs, uh, actually, I was sitting here, and on CNN, suddenly CNN became so interested in the lives of Egyptian girls and women, but the lives of Egyptian girls and women many of whom have been living in absolute poverty, many of whom have been living in graveyards, was never of a concern you know, to CNN or to BBC or to CBC. And suddenly it became of concern because you know, there is a very sexual story that can easily sell on, on North American TV. Patriarchy, since this evolution of the slave system, cannot think except in dichotomies. Either this or that. You are a virgin or you are a prostitute. You are a good woman or a bad woman. You are God or the devil, you know? They cannot think in other terms. You belong to the, you are westernized or easternized, you know? You belong to the west or the east. If you are against the west, then you should be fundamentalist, religious fundamentalist. If you are not religious fundamentalist, then you are with the West. So uh, it's typical of patriarchal upbringing and thinking. And we have to get away from that because uh, uh, there is nothing called East and West to me. We are living in one world. That is what these women have come to say. We are living in one world. And some of them risk their lives sometimes forced into exile, so that other women may live freely in it. Uh, 
انت منعاها 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 كل واحد ها اذا كل واحد ها معناتها خلاص القرار بيمشي منعاها بشكل مبور قديش مثلا نسبه مثلا الاهلي بالفعل واعيين زيك اللي بيمنعوا من والله عدد كبير جدا من الاسر على النظام ده رافضين الحكايه طبيعي قمع المراه يعني بيك بيك بكل طريقه ممكن انا ايش بقول لك انه هذا شيء غربي ايش تفسير تبعنا بقول لك اي شيء ما هو بس عم يتزين تزين اللي جوزك بس اذا ما عندك جوز حقك راح حقك يعني انا رايح مثل عادي ما تخلفيش حالك لو في السودان نتم حقك والله حقي طوالي رايح حقك طوالي رايح يا حليفه ما تروحي السودان حليفه شوفي بس تكوني مطلقه او ارمله وضعك تعيس تعيس وما فماش لا ساحه ولا وبالتاكيد في نساء كثير بيخافوا وعندهم قيود بتمنعهم من انهم يكونوا صريحات للدرجه الكافيه في التعبير عن مشاكلهم الاجتماعيه وعن وعن مواقفهم السياسيه او مواقفهم العامه وخاصه النقديه منها اللي بتتعلق في وجهات نظر مختلفه مع وجهات النظر اللي متبنيتها الحكومه اذا انت اخذت موقف علني وموقف جريء وموقف علمي في التعبير عن الراي بغض النظر عن الظروف اللي موجوده هذا بيشجع النساء الاخريات على انهم يعني يعبروا عن نفسهم بنفس الطريقه وانا بعتقد انه النساء الرائدات في مجتمعاتنا اللي احنا تعلمنا منهم واللي بدوا النضال في الوطني والنسوي في وقت مبكر جدا شكلوا مثل اعلى لنا وان شاء الله احنا بنقدر نشكل يعني مثل اعلى لبناتنا ولا ولا النساء الاخريات في مجتمعنا سيكنا بدنا نسوي